Hi, I'm Kwan Tracy Cherry, and I'm here with Tavish Carter. And it's our raw material week nine, intentions week. And the question is out of everything you want in life, what do you want the most? So you can leave it in the comment section, our raw material dot com instagram as well as our youtube channel thanks we'll be right back what do you want the most it's kind of a tough thing that we all struggle with figuring out yes our intentions um, get wrapped up in so many things so emotions drive intention it falls under the emotional weeks and when we look at the things that we want, right, it's so vast. And when we look at the amount of time we have to actually accomplish things and what else, what our responsibilities are and things like that, we find ourselves without a lot of time for all of the intentions we would like to pursue. So what winds up happening is we become disappointed or disillusioned with the things that we haven't done, not giving credit enough to the things we have done and then trying to do too many things or shutting down entirely and doing nothing. There's endless possibilities of what we do when we are overwhelmed by intention. And then what also happens that being an emotional week, that also includes our mentors and our tour mentors. So we can get caught in that disassociation that we learned very early on in childhood about what we don't want, what isn't going to work, and so we focus a lot of our intention on the so-called negative or the, the and so we can, it, it, so it becomes a vicious cycle or self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about being a kid. I don't even know. I don't think they do this anymore. But, but they used to have, um, when you're in the grocery store or the drugstore, the balloons mm -hmm. would be in this little cage and it would have all, they would all have a string on them. And you would stand under there and you would look up at all of these balloons uh -huh. and try to pick, you know, which is the one that you're going to get, which is going to be the, the good one. Yes. Right. And we go through like which color is the best color, which, you know, we have to decide um, which balloon is going to bring us the intentions that we are <laughs> trying to fulfill by just having a balloon. Okay. And so it's that sort of feeling. There are that many options available to us all the time. When we realize like the ones that we pull on, the ones that we decide to hold with us and keep with us. Um, and my school, that was called the Hara line that carries all of the intentions for, so for just those purposes, I'll call it the Hara, H-A-R-A. -A. Okay. Our entire little, you know, um, funnel of intentions okay. and all of the possibilities that could possibly be. So when we start to imagine those spaces using um, hmm. our, not only our intellect, but using our imagination, using our intuition, using those things that open us up rather than shut us off, we start to look at the world differently. So I know it seems weird, stay with me for a minute, mm -hmm. but if you, you know, look at the world and say, oh, I can't imagine something in the news, um, murder, mm -hmm. I can't imagine why, what would drive a person to murder? Mm -hmm. And that's a normal belief for a regular human being, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us would feel bad if we could conceive of murder. The reality is we all have the ability to conceive murder. Yeah. And when we let ourselves through that imagination, through that intuition, through feeling, try that on and, and know what it would be like then we don't stop at how could a person do something or why would a person do something? We've imagined it, we've allowed it. It makes it possible. So we are seeing all the possibilities and allowing all of the possibilities instead of trying to somehow stave some off or keep them away from us. See ourselves as separate. That doesn't mean we would make the choice to murder someone. Um, you know, our, our intuition and intellect working together in a healthy way would make it so that none of us would murder anyone. Yes, because we, we would automatically see how we're all interconnected in the first place. So to murder someone else would be an infraction against yourself as well. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get where you're, at, where you're going with this. But when you don't 
have that awareness that you are connected at the core to everybody else. You know, before we start every session here, we do a grounding intention and we bring in all of the energies that we can. We set intentions that the words that we're going to say and the sentiments that we are bringing reach people at a deep level, not just their into intellect, but their intuition and their imagination. And by doing that, our intentions are always for the greater good. Of course, we want personal success for this work that we're doing. But at the same time, the intentions are tied to a greater good at every step. Yeah, because even the, even the word success is more attached to an ego concern then when we're looking at the soul and the rootedness, just just having the, I, I don't want to say responsibility, but just having the privilege, I like that better, the privilege to be able to take time to co-create this 12 pillars, drinking water, physical, just the hour raw material, just to be able to do this regularly the, the intention is the service. The intention is the love of how we are all interconnected and rooted together. And it's not, it's, it's like, a, go ahead. I was just going to say the care and feeding of humans is at the roots root. of, of So the success is that, you know, just the fact that we're in front of you uh, doing this, this beginning seed work. Uh, is is uh, monumental. <laughs> yeah, monumental. So then when we each take that into our own intentions, when we take this structure and, and bring it wholly into ourselves and how we interact with within ourselves specifically and then secondarily within the world, we start to align with intentions that serve passion and purpose. And our emotions shift. Mm -hmm. the more positive ones remain prevalent because we are able to stay in that space of imagination combined with intellect, which at some point when we're kids, we shut down. Or we are told a belief system that shuts it down for us. Mm -hmm. The imagination space is more valuable than we realize. And it becomes incredibly valuable around choosing which intentions to pursue. Yeah, because I, I, I feel that, that certainly if I make the intention to come from a place of open heartedness and then I make an intention that I will recognize when I want to react versus when I want to respond. And in that breath or in that pause or that beat, uh, there is a, a sense of maybe a therefore the grace of God go I kind of a thing where you feel this sense of, oh yeah, I can see how I could do exactly what that person has done. And so intention, it, it's not mamsy pamsy and let's just imagine a great beautiful world, although that can be there, but it, it's that it's all of it. Because remember, week 11 is aligning with intention. So we're in the the how we're gonna co-create and manifest weeks of intention, resources, aligning with intention, and then wholeness. So these next four weeks are kind of the, the harvest time of, of our raw material, of where we start to say, oh, this. These are the manifesting Yeah, Yeah, this, this, this is how this stuff comes together. We can actually see it in our physical reality. I like that you mentioned seeing it because mm -hmm. there are so many intentions that we hold yeah. and bring that we don't see. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the places where we get tripped up. And I think at the root of every single one of those is some, is it's fear based. Yeah. When we spend any amount of time in fear, worried about what might happen or even anticipating how to not have a negative thing or perceived negative thing happen, um, we're still putting energy towards that thing. And when mm -hmm. our energy is focused in yeah. imagining the things that we want, not the things that we're afraid of, 
you can just see how that shines a better light on the passion and purpose instead of just building this energetic debris that comes with being on the hamster wheel with fear. Mm -hmm. Because the fear constricts the heart. It constricts the energy. It it, it, It stops the breath. Yes. It becomes shallow. And, and, And I can tell you that when you're not taking the time to monitor or at least breathe in, even when you're not stressed. I mean, if you know Tab, she's one of the most laid back people on the planet. So it is, it, yeah. In, I, in appearance. In, in appearance, yeah. And, but, and then that's where the fear comes in because you can have this whole inner dialogue going on that's constricted, but what we see is the what you just said, the laid back. We see this, but there can be this... The, the what's next kind of a thing. So the more you recognize where the fears are. Or that there are fears. That there are fears. that there is fear. Yeah. It's just recognizing, oh, I'm tripped up here. I'm not breathing here. Something has stopped my ability to fully inhale and then fully exhale. And we're conditioned to do that. We're also conditioned to believe that fear is a part of our life. And the more that we believe that fear motivates or drives us um the more it does but fear is cloudy regardless of our intentions the world will present itself as the world does based on the beliefs that we all hold to be true you know it doesn't mean that you're not going to still have pain doesn't mean you're not going to sometimes get offended doesn't mean you're not going to be disillusioned or disappointed but it's for shorter periods of time or you you start to in the moment recognize, oh, aha, those so-called epiphanies that you don't have to languish in this. You can recognize it, see it, accept it. Because my intention, um, like today as I was driving over, was acceptance. How can I just have acceptance of whatever comes because this is a Monday, and, and I have way more to do on a Monday than I like. But I said, how can I intend to have acceptance for how much I have to do today that I've chosen and not get caught up in, well, on Monday normally, you know, or because how many times do you presuppose a conversation that you haven't even had? That you go in and you intend that it's going to go all like this, and you get there and the person's like, oh, I wasn't feeling that at all. <laughs> yeah. Right. So... That's that's fear-based stuff. Yeah. That's anticipating something that isn't even what's bound to happen mm-hmm. um, when we can just imagine the best for it. So I do have a physical challenge for our emotional intention week. And I tried it out over the weekend. And I can tell you I am actually a little sore from it. But mm-hmm. standing with your feet on the ground, and if you can't stand, you can do this sitting too. But to focus on your energy pressing down alternately your little toes and then your big toe and then your heel and doing that standing doing it even on one leg if you want to push the the up will show you where in your body you're not breathing so you might have pain in your feet it might move to your ankles your calves lower back all the way up to the low back, and that's where I got it. Yeah, that's the yeah, So I'm all the way through that pelvic and low back area, I can tell is where I disconnect the intellect and the emotional space. So when we want to really align our intentions and our breath, we've got to be able to move through those spaces. And so that um, focusing on those areas within our feet um, and even trying to press all three down at the same time changes your tiny muscle groups, the ones that we don't even listen to. So that's creating some mind body awareness around the intentional spaces that we have filled up with something energetically, um, in the way. And it's, and it's easy to go in and clear those out, not even need to know what they are to just find them, identify them, breathe through them and, uh, and move on. Mm -hmm. So that's my challenge for the week physically. Um, anything else for you to add? No, I, I, I'm pressing the toes. You can do it while you <laughs> feel you doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can that, see that, where no, it goes, yeah, right? Yeah, and and it's and sending as as hokey as this may sound, sending love and light to those spaces. Not saying I have that there's something wrong there, just 
thank you for acknowledging where I've been stuck or where there's been a clog or that kind of a thing. Instead Just of a moment where you stop yeah. breathing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Second. We'll be not. We will. We will be back <laughs> next week for Resource Week. Right. Love that one. Enjoy yourself. Thanks.